So welcome to the Bessem Museum, everyone. I'm Mark Kinney, and I'm a photographer and whatever. So any of the imperfections in this program, you'll know who to say to all, never hire this guy again. <laughs> You're paying him too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to introduce to you. Uh, my name is Amanda Kisherik. I'm the education coordinator here at the Bessem Museum. And we are here to talk about the trees of nation and other trees mm -hmm. and decorations that the museum has put together. And it's quite a show. So let's get started. Great. So uh, welcome. I'm really glad to have an audience, albeit you know, not in the museum, but we're really glad to be able to share what we have here at the museum for the season of life. We have a lot of friends that you know, usually make the trek out here to the museum, but this year is a little different. Uh, so I'm really glad to uh, have some friends along to see what we have. Uh, every year we have some great volunteers who come out and do a really excellent job with the trees that we have all around the museum, all the decorations that are so special. And uh, so I'm really glad to have a start here in our Trees of Nations, which gives us a great exploration around the world. Uh, we can really see where a lot of our traditions that we're celebrating here in America uh, have their beginnings. So I'd like to start with the tree that's uh, celebrating Saturnalia. I'm going to uh, move around the room and I think our photographer uh, will follow me that way. I think we're going this way. Yes, okay. Wonderful. So you'll see next to me uh, is a tree that's celebrating a Roman festival of Saturnalia. And now this is not to be confused with celebration of the planet Saturn. We're talking about uh, at the time, the sun god Saturn was the name. Um, and so with this Roman festival, um, it would have been a week long event um, that would have been celebrated from approximately December 17th until December 23rd. Um, and so now that I'm thinking about it, is today the 17th? It is. It is the 17th. So, happy Saturnalia, everybody. Um, so, this festival um, had to do with raising morale for the citizenry. And so, it really was looking forward into the future, hoping for um, good luck in battles, celebrating things that they were thankful for. So, a lot of the things that you're seeing on this tree, uh, it's, it's representing gilded fruits, uh, nuts, um, treasures of the season, really. Uh, we have some gold coins that are around the skirt of the tree. Um, and this is all on an evergreen. And evergreens, of course, always green, representing life during a time when everything's pretty dark and dreary. Um, so, of course, as we celebrate here, all of our trees have lost our leaves. So it really is a celebration of life and all the good things. Um, so now, of course, this was around... 217 BCE, so this is quite long ago. Um, now we're going to move back around the room to something that I think is a little more familiar to all of us. And we're going to start with our tree that celebrates the decorations of Germany. Um, so I'm choosing this tree for a few reasons. Uh, so you'll notice that this tree is particularly sparkly. <laughs> So we have a tree that's covered in silver tinsel. It also has a great deal of glass bulb ornaments. Um, a lot of us use the glass bulb still in our tree, although today a lot of our decorations are made out of plastics. Um, much of that has to do with uh, things that are uh, easy to produce, um, a little bit less expensive. But of course, at this time, uh, that all of these ornaments were coming to fruition, the idea of using tinsel, we actually used real silver strips. So it was very expensive. And to actually have gilded fruits and nuts, uh, much of it was real silver or gold. A lot of it was solid. It would have been very expensive. And so we're looking at things that the upper class in particular would have wanted to be using. Um, but then we're getting 
uh, craftspeople involved. And so that's really sparking a lot of innovation in craftspeople. Um, you know, wanting to reinterpret decorations that the upper class would have had for people who didn't quite have as many resources. So this is where the glass blowing really takes shape. So they're making ornaments that are resembling fruits. Um, they're making the glass bulbs um, that were really quite intricate at the time, um, the way that they were decorated on uh, the trees, um, really revolutionized the way that we see things around the world. So as you can see, we have a few different fun shapes. We actually have a pickle right here. Um, the German pickle is a tradition that many people have in the US still. Um, so I believe that tradition uh, involves hiding the pickle on the tree. And I know in a couple different families, they do things different ways. Um, I know I have heard where the first person who finds the pickle uh, gets to open a present first, or they get an extra present. Um, sometimes that person actually gets to uh, say, play Santa or St. Nicholas, and they pass out the presents to everybody around the room. Um, so there's lots of different ways to interpret that. We also have some uh, nutcrackers. I think you can see our little friend, the nutcracker here. So that's involving the wood carvers. Um, and so for many of these traditions around the world, we're looking at what would have been um, the dominant uh, crafts, um, what were the resources of these areas? So we're looking at the glass blowers, especially in Germany, um, the woodworkers, and things like that. Um, this tree also has uh, candles as decoration. So in many places around the world, you'll see trees that are decorated with candles. Now, I don't believe they have the candles lit uh, for the entire month of December. I think usually the tradition goes that uh, you light the candles maybe once um, Christmas Eve or the Eve before St. Nicholas Day. Um, so as you notice, I mentioned St. Nicholas. We have our little ornaments right here, our St. Nicholas. And we also have a St. Nicholas atop this tree. Um, St. Nicholas was a genuine real person. Um, he uh, was declared a saint, um, but he was involved with uh, caring for the children as well as the idea of um, sending gifts and giving to the less fortunate. Um, so he really is somebody that we still uh, are celebrating and bring forth, especially during the Christmas season. So now what I'd like to do is go right next door. We have our Republic of Poland tree. And so as I mentioned before, we're talking about the crafts, uh, associated with resources in the area. Um, something that's a really great craft uh, all year round is the Polish tradition of paper cutting. So as you notice, many of these decorations on this tree are actually made out of paper. Um, similar to the German tree, uh, a lot of the traditions came from uh, people in the area who are seeing the upper class uh, decorations, um, beautiful chains, uh, chandeliers, things like that in um, the larger, uh, much more decorated homes of people who had a little bit more. And uh, they were trying to replicate what some of those uh, decorations look like. And so we have a really distinctive chain on this tree, a little bit different than many of the chains that we're using um, in kindergarten classes. We have our paper cuttings here uh, decorating our tree. We also have a couple of different types of wood crafts. You'll actually also notice on this tree we have some red apples. So that's a callback to Saturnalia where we're celebrating the fruits of the season. Um, we're celebrating the, all of the good things that we are so thankful for. So I really like to start with these traditions because I think that especially in Alpina, there's a lot of families that have their traditions starting here. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually we'll move back to the other side of the room, get a little bit of a workout, and we'll talk about um, some other uh, European traditions as well. So side by side, we have our tree celebrating the Netherlands. You'll notice our windmills that are in this tree. We also have our Republic of Lithuania. And this tree is covered with quite a bit of ornaments uh, made out of straw. Um, so I would call back to the crafts 
uh, and the resources of these areas. You'll see quite a bit of weaving on this tree as well. And right beneath this tree, I'm gonna pick it up so it's easier to see. We have a lovely wooden clog. So of course, I think many of us know the story of the Dutch clog. And uh, as it pertains to the story of St. Nicholas, if you're leaving your clogs out during the night, you may expect to find them filled with treats. Where's our clog? <laughs> <laughs> and so you might not need a clog these days, but uh, oftentimes in the story of St. Nicholas, uh, you'll find uh, leaving your shoes out during the night or your stockings out during the night, you might find some treats in them the morning after. So this tree also has uh, some little partridges. We have uh, various fruits and nuts and berries, of course, like we talked about with the Saturnalia. We're looking towards a brighter future. We're thankful for the things that we have all year and we celebrate those things. Um, in Lithuania then, we're moving into these straw ornaments that are woven together so expertly by these craftspeople. We have angels adorning the tree. And you'll notice that there's actually a little baby cradle at the bottom of the tree. And it's filled with straw. Now, where would we have heard a story about a baby close to straw? So this is actually a callback to the story of the nativity. And so placing a cradle or a manger scene at the foot of the tree and uh, using the straw ornaments as a call to the straw and livestock of the manger. Um, this is really a celebration of the birth of Christ. So we're talking about um, using these ornaments in a way uh, to tell that story, especially on December 25th. So, I'm going to move next to another pair of trees. It's actually celebrating uh, two different places, but they're actually uh, more familiar than you'd think. So we have the British Isles of Great Britain, but this is Christmas traditions in both England and Scotland. The will see are kind of like cousins here. <laughs> so both trees are featuring quite a bit of red uh, for Christmas time. Uh, we have our French horns, the ornaments, um, celebrating the music of the season. Uh, I think we can all agree that many of our carols that we think of these days have their origins back in uh, cathedrals with the choirs uh, that we're familiar with close to royalty in England. Uh, we have toys, we have little present boxes. A lot of this is celebrating the way that children engage with the holiday. Um, similarly, on our Scottish tree, we have the red, but we also have the tartan plaid. We also have some ornaments that are connected to uh, the sheep herding we see. So we've got some wool. We're talking about celebrating those textiles. Uh, we have some little boxes and um, snowmen who are representing toys again and celebrating the children's connection to this holiday. Hopefully we can see all of the detail on these lovely little ornaments. And then we will move back across the room for our lovely story about some children. So we're going to the tree celebrating Ukraine. Now this tree has some unusual ornaments that you may not be expecting to see uh, during the Christmas season. So as you can see, these are actually spider webs. Now does anybody <laughs> enjoy having spiders in their Christmas tree? I know I don't, but you do find a spider in your Christmas tree in the Ukraine, that actually might give you some good luck. So there once was a story of a woman who became a widow. Her husband passed away. She had two young children and they did not have very much money. They lived in a very small uh, home, uh, what you might consider a hut. Um, but outside of their hut started growing an evergreen tree. And the children were so excited because this meant that maybe that year they would have a tree suitable for Christmas. So they tended to the tree all year round. 
and they made sure that it grew nice and strong so that they could have it for Christmas. The time came, Christmas Eve was upon them. They brought the tree inside the house and they were so excited, but then they realized that they did not have enough money to decorate it. So as we know, um, decorations were very important. It was looking to the future. We were celebrating the things we were thankful for. And this really reminded them of all of the hardships that they had during the year. And so of course the whole family, they cried, but there were spiders living in this tree and they heard the cries of the family. So at night when the family was asleep, the spiders wove beautiful webs all over the tree. And in the morning when the children and the mother came out to see the tree, they all gasped because the sun coming through the window, it lit up these webs little bits of dew kind of shone on them and it looked like brilliant silver. And so it really was a reminder of the family for all of the good things that they had during the year. So um, you can find all kinds of ornaments that our craft people even in the US are making with little lucky spiders. So if you see those at a craft show, that's what they're celebrating is they're looking at a lucky little Ukrainian spider. So maybe if you do find a spider in your Christmas tree, um, Maybe uh, guide him outside and you not know, smoke him too good. So. <laughs> but keep the web. But keep the web. The web is good luck. All right. Um, right behind me is a really great story that I like to tell about how traditions around the world sort of meld and uh, shape together. So we have a tree celebrating uh, Christmas in Japan. Now, Japan is not a nation known for celebrating Christian traditions, which many of our um, Christmas stories are really centered around the Christian traditions. Um, and so the idea of celebrating Christmas in Japan is, is looking at what other countries are doing and um, using the ways that their own Japanese traditions fit into that way. So in Japan, it's really blending um, visitors from outside, it becomes more of a cultural uh, world tradition. So again, the, the crafts of this area would have involved quite a bit of paper. We have paper fans, we have origami, uh, there's cranes that are involved. We have little wind chimes here as well. And many of our visitors who come in to see this tree notice that under the tree, we actually have a little package that's labeled KFC. Well, now, why would we have a package labeled KFC by the Japanese tree? Now, this is sort of a nod to a fun story. There are two uh, origins of this story. Uh, the first origin is KFC looking to expand their brand into a new country sometime around the 70s, was interested in um, showing the story of uh, how Americans celebrate Christmas. And uh, in Japan, they don't have uh, turkeys. And so the closest thing to a turkey dinner for Christmas would have been a, a chicken dinner for Christmas. So sharing the idea of Americans gathered around the table and having a lovely Christmas dinner um, really inspired many of the Japanese families to go out and buy KFC chicken. Um, there is also another story where there would have been an American soldier who was stationed in Japan, really missing his family around the holidays. The closest thing that he could get to a real authentic American dinner would have been KFC. And this story really struck a nerve in the hearts of the Japanese people. And that's why they wanted to go out and get KFC for Christmas. Now, not all families are going to go out and celebrate Christmas with KFC, but it is a story that is talked about, and uh, there are still some families who enjoy um, sharing dinner around the table with each other. Uh, one of the traditions that's a little bit different is they will get a celebration cake with their meal. Uh, I love to ask the children who come in to uh, see this tree, um, the cake is bright red, what kind of a flavor would you expect that celebration cake to be. And actually the celebration cake would have been strawberry flavor. And so for many people uh, here in the US, we think of strawberry, maybe we think of chocolate covered strawberries for Valentine's Day. Um, there are a lot of couples in Japan who actually look at Christmas as a couple's holiday. 
Um, so I like to think of it as a nice way to share with the people that we are close to um, all around the world. Now we have two other things that I'd like to group together and they are in some warmer climates. So we're going to move right next door to our uh, United Mexican States tree and this tree, which to us is gonna look a little unusual. Now this is the only tree in our exhibit that is not an evergreen and this is representing Brazil. Now, the reason why these two trees are a little bit different, a little brighter, a little bolder, uh, I like to think about how close are these countries to the equator? Yes, so the seasons are going to be different when we're celebrating Christmas in these two countries. It's going to be quite a lot warmer, not nearly as snowy as it is here in Alpena. And so you'll actually see quite a few more uh, birds out singing, enjoying the weather, uh, blossoms everywhere on the trees. Uh, it's springtime. Um, so the tree in Brazil, is actually covered in these bright tissue flowers. Um, it's a happy, joyous time. Um, there's all these little birds that are here. Got a whole bunch of little birds. I think of them as songbirds and I think for us here in Michigan, we kind of stop hearing them for a while. It's just too cold. Yes, and so the Mexican tree is featuring quite a bit of those crafts, again, that we talked about, especially with our Polish tree, with the German tree, uh, many crafts made out of paper, um, really celebrating textiles of the region too. So we've got things that are um, made out of uh, yarns, made out of tissue paper, uh, and we do have these really special uh, ornaments that are made out of tin. Uh, maybe we can see those, and that's a little sparkly but you really get to see the handmade quality of all of these pieces. Um, people would have spent lots of time dedicated to really making these trees their own. So it's celebrating the time and talents of you know, friends and neighbors all around. And uh, I would like to, before we move on, share the story of the Noche Buena, or as we would know it, the poinsettia. Um, so in America, we know of the Christmas flower, the poinsettia, um, because of a botanist, uh, his last name was Poinsett, and so that's where we're getting our name poinsettia. Those bright, brilliant flowers that we have. Um, the story goes, in Mexico, there was a poor young girl, and uh, it was very important to go to the church to celebrate Christmas, uh, but many people would bring presents to the church to celebrate the newborn baby Jesus. Now she was a poor, um, uh, from a poor family, and she did not have very much. She didn't have anything to give, but she was going along uh, to meet her cousin to celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus. And as she walked along the road, she realized, you know, she was going to show up to this church with nothing to offer, and that made her so sad. And um, as she walked, she recalled words of her cousin who had told her that as long as you're giving with love in your heart, um, that's all that matters. Um, but she, she again thought, well, I, I don't have anything to give. What can I give? Um, but there were some weeds growing at the side of the road and they kind of looked dead and uh, there wasn't very much pretty about them. Um, so as uh, she thought about these words and she was very sad, uh, she plucked the weeds made a bouquet and thought, well, maybe this will be good. Uh, maybe these will be appreciated. Well, as she entered the church, the warmth of the church and the warmth in her heart because of the love that she was giving with this bouquet caused the bouquet to burst into brilliant red blooms. The uh, poinsettias as we know them were the noche buenas, they all opened up and everybody was amazed that these weeds turned into these brilliant flowers. So we can think of how uh, wonderful it is to have flowers like that that we see in our grocery stores that are so brilliant red in a time where things are so dark and dreary here uh, in the U.S. So at the top of the tree there's this couple, well not exactly at the top. Yes. Is there a story about that? Is it... So I think similar to uh, how in other countries we're celebrating um, the love of family and togetherness, 
Um, we've got this couple who are actually made out of a ceramic. So again, touching back to the uh, crafts of that area. Mm -hmm. um, there is just a whole lot of love that is put into these items by the people who are making them. And so uh, it's really touching on um, family and togetherness. Yes. Same. Nice. Yes. All right. Do we have any more questions of this area? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Oh, yes. And behind the scenes, let me introduce my <laughs> wife, who is helping with this uh, presentation. She is uh, letting people into the room and uh, moving cords and helping me. So we're going to walk to the other end now, or where are we headed? Uh, yes. So we will be moving to um, our community tree. Um, okay. And so we'll be able to see some of the trees that are decorated by uh, community members, uh, members of nonprofits. And you're not forgetting the Coca-Cola tree and the. Oh yes, we can talk about that too. Yeah, I mean those. Are <laughs> let's let's do that. Okay, let me not step on our cords here. So, what about the yellow cord? Yeah, just unplug it. This one. This. Then you can move the cart. No worry at all. Or except me. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry about the movement of the camera here. Yeah, hopefully we haven't lost anybody, not too dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. Okay. So this area I have is sort of dedicated to um, elements of American Christmas. I like to tell a lot of our visitors that usually we don't have too many trees dedicated to the U.S. here, uh, because we live in the U.S. We all have trees uh, in our own homes or I've seen them around the community. And, and so we really see that tradition everywhere. Um, but we really wanted to dedicate uh, this to some lesser known traditions. So what are some of the origins of some things that we just don't think about every day? Um, so we start with, I've got a red, white, and blue, very patriotic tree. And sometimes you think, well, what's, what's so patriotic about Christmas? Christmas is not you know, it's, it's not something that took place in America. I mean, we're talking about um, St. Nicholas uh, off in Germany and um, the nativity scene uh, kind of in the Middle East region. It's very different. Well, this all begins with the idea of American Santa. Where is this coming from? Uh, and there's actually a connection to Coca-Cola that you might not expect. So we begin 1862. There's a man named Thomas Nast, and if you recognize that name, he was a cartoonist for Harper's Weekly, and he designed a cartoon uh, that was celebrating Christmas during the Civil War. And so in this cartoon, we have a Santa Claus depicted passing out presents to soldiers from the Civil War, and he was actually wearing a coat that was adorned with silver stars, and he had red and white striped pants. So it's almost like a combination of Uncle Sam and Santa together. But that really had to do with patriotism at the time uh, during the Civil War. So this idea of the patriotic Santa bled into the rest of his drawings. So he, Santa was featured with a uh, red coat more often than not. So this image here is colorized after the fact, but you know people grew to know Thomas Nast Santa as being this man with the big beard, the big belly, he's got the red coat. Um, and so that uh, image really stuck with people for a very long time. Now, um, we pass through the 1800s, we get into the early 1900s, uh, we're heading towards the uh, Great Depression. So 1820s, or sorry, 1920s, um, the economy's not looking so great, um, president of Coca-Cola is looking for a way to set it apart as the beverage that everybody's going to want. Um, and, and why would people want to buy this beverage? We've got somebody who writes the slogan, uh, Archie Lee. He writes the slogan, the pause that refreshes. So we're taking a pause from all of the hard work. We're getting refreshed. Who works harder than anybody else? Well, it has to be St. Nick or Santa Claus here in the U.S. So this is where the uh, origin of Santa Claus drinking Coca-Cola, taking a break, maybe he's playing with the kids' toys or reading the kids' story. 
but he's always got a glass of Coke in his hand. Well, now this was probably one of the most successful advertising campaigns of the time. Um, and uh, even though everything was sort of coming to a standstill at this point, um, it was really uh, uh, bolstering the market. It was, it was doing quite well. So much in fact that here we are, it's 2020, it's over a hundred years um, from that time where people were starting to make this change. And we have so much Coca-Cola memorabilia um, that we're spreading it onto our Christmas trees. Um, this has led into the inclusion of the little white polar bear uh, with our little penguins and our elves and everybody who's sharing a Coke with people all over the world. So we have decided to add in our little Coca-Cola tree next to our America uh, tradition. That's a wonderful set of traditions. Yeah, so I really hope that that, you know, sends people a sense of nostalgia. I know it kind of does for me. Um, I know we've got all kinds of Coke things, and things you wouldn't even think to include. Um, but this tree is just adorned with all kinds of ornaments, things that I actually recall from, you know, my childhood of seeing um, in the stores or on a friend's Christmas tree, or things like that. So, boy, it sure is fun. So I think... That will fill up um, our trees of nations and we'll continue on with our community trees. All right. So as we walk through the museum, you'll see some more of our decor um, from the rest of the season of light. And much of our decor for this year is going to be featuring uh, light blue, icy colors. As you can see, we've got a lovely little tofiri here, with a little snowman. And we have some really excellent helpers uh, who are assisting with all of our decorations during the year. Uh, Marilyn Thome and uh, Delaine Medina are always here. They're here, I think, really after summer ends with wonderful ideas. So we start pretty early coming up with great ideas for the next season. So this idea of including blue um, is sort of a takeoff from last year. For last year, we were using uh, red and black and white. Uh, we wanted to really emphasize the red. I'll start over on the hair. Stop. Okay. Hey, they're all on. Yes. All, on. all right, where do we begin? Um, so we'll go around a little bit faster than we did in the uh, Trees of Nations. So um, just an overview. So in this area of the museum, this is generally our Native American exhibit. As you can see behind most of these trees, you are still able to see uh, window displays for the Native American exhibit. Um, but we like to include community trees. So. Um, people from around the community who are involved in um, nonprofits all around. Uh, we try to mix it up every year, see uh, who can be involved. Uh, sometimes we ask new groups that we've never worked with uh, to come and join us. Uh, there are some traditions that stick around for many years because they always come up with new things. And, and boy, it's just really fun to see the creativity of our neighbors and the community. So I'll go through and share um, some of the different places. Uh, we will be posting on our own uh, Best Museum Facebook a little more information about each of the trees. So we won't spend too much uh, time talking about all of the information about the trees, but I'll give us a little overview of what we're looking at. Uh, so what we have here, we have our Thunder Bay Arts Gallery. Uh, I know you can see the Thunder Bay Arts Gallery uh, in downtown Alpena. It's really great to be able to celebrate and support our small um, businesses and especially members of our community who are artists. Uh, so this year they went for a gradient color scheme. We've got a blue into the icy color, silver, and into white and up at the top. We've got those cranes, but as we might um, think of them here in Alpena, think of our great blue herons that uh, fly over the rivers. I think that's really what we love to celebrate here, especially because of their logo, the Thunder Bay Arts. Uh, next, we have a really colorful tree, but this colorful tree really has some deep meaning behind it. So this tree is for the Hope Shores Alliance, and each of the colors on this tree 
uh, identifies a different type of, um, of uh, violence, really. And, and the Hope Shores Alliance is working to um, prevent that and support people who are affected by that kind of, uh, say, domestic violence or um, stalking or assault, things like that. And you'll see this year, they actually included some small ornaments that are mirrors because all of these things, they ripple through the community and they affect everybody. So they are um, providing support for the community. And you can find some more information about that as we go through on our Best Museum page and we post some more links to those pages. Um, this tree here uh, is for the Parkinson's uh, support group, and it's actually featuring a bright red tulip. Uh, the tulip has a much deeper meaning um, for the Parkinson uh, society, um, and it was developed as a symbol of um, strength and connection within the community of people who are affected by this disease. Um, so there is a Parkinson's support group here in Alpena. Uh, Judy Poli is the facilitator, so maybe you know her or know somebody who is connected there. Um, we'll continue on um, sharing some of that information on our own Facebook page as well. Uh, we love to see people get connected. Um, next to this tree, we've got some lovely ornaments uh, talking about uh, sharing clothing and food and resources um, because this is the Salvation Army tree. And so as you can see, we've got quite a bit of color going on here. We've got little um, grocery bags and presents, because sometimes that's really um, what people need during the year. Um, so we're so glad to uh, give people um, an outlet to see what people are doing in the community, how we keep connected, and how we can support everybody. Right. The last two trees, or no, we've got a few more trees. We have a tree celebrating the Alpena Downtown Development Authority. And so just as I mentioned in the Thunder Bay Arts uh, camp, uh, Gallery, um, it's really great to support our small businesses, especially in our downtown area. It really keeps the Alpena area thriving. We got a little present with a downtown dollar. So remember to support our downtown for our small businesses. Maybe go out and get some Christmas presents from one of the businesses and buy and right next to us here, we have our Alpena Senior Citizen Center. So they are putting uh, people of uh, older ages uh, in connection to many resources that they might not have had otherwise, as well as providing um, some socialization, lots of games, lots of activities to be involved with, um, food, uh, economic resources, um, and information more than anything. Um, and so they're really providing some advocacy um, out in the community. We have two more trees in this room before we move on to the second half of the gallery. We have a lovely display. This is the Alpena County Horseman's Club. So if you are somebody who uh, loves horses, has horses, has friends who have horses, they are some really great people to know. And boy, are they fun. So we have uh, some lovely kind of rustic decorations. We've got little horsey stuff out. So it's really great if you are able to come in and see this in the museum. There's lots of things that I noticed for the first time that are just tucked in there have a really great accent but uh, they used a lot of the red decorations so they have our second place uh, ribbons because that's what we find most of the time uh, our red ribbons are for second place but um, on the side of the tree we've got a nice pair of cowboy boots and a hat um, so that's a great little accent for this Christmas tree All right, very nice. We have one more. One more. On and this side. This is for the Thunder Bay River Center. So um, there has been a group who is working to build this Thunder Bay River Center um, where we would know of uh, the Duck Park or um, Island Park, which is such a great place to go and explore. Um, the nature of that area is really incredible. The biology about it is just so fascinating to study. And so all of these ornaments are decked out with different creatures and plants and activities that people are taking part in um, at this area. And so they actually have a little donation box. So if you are willing um, to participate, they would love to have your help and support. Uh, if you have more uh, questions for them, they 
will change our um, our view too much. I think we'll be all right. So this first tree is pretty special to us here at the museum. This tree is a little bit larger than some of the other ones. Um, it's celebrating our Founder Society here at the museum. So if you're not a member of the Founder Society, it's really easy to become one. They are pretty involved uh, as some of our volunteers here at the museum. And everything they're doing is here to support all of the work that gets done at the museum. Now many of these decorations, they have these old antique angels. And um, it's really celebrating um, uh, collection. And so these uh, angels are all part of um, uh, what we are so inspired to do, which is to really take great care of our collection. And the founders are able to support us in all of those endeavors. There's some information you can find on the tree, uh, as well as some information about uh, volunteer activities that you can take part in here at the museum. All right. We move this way. We have our 4-H tree. And so we can see by looking at the tree, we have our 4-H spelled out for us. We've got our head, heart, hands, and health. And so all of the ornaments that are decorating this tree were actually made by people who are involved in the 4-H in the community. I knew a lot of students growing up in schools here that were involved in the 4-H group, and they were really making wonderful connections that have served them well um, as youth uh, and into their adulthood. Um, so the 4-H group is just really a great uh, thing to participate in, and we're so glad to have them. Very nice. Thank you. Um, and right next to this tree is a really great connection as well. So this is our Boys and Girls Club Youth Volunteer Corps, or YBC. Um, sometimes you see these students out in the area who are out doing work and really um, learning and improving their own lives by the way that they're connected. Um, beneath the tree, you'll see some lovely gifts. And these are uh, part of the gifts that you're receiving by participating in these groups. So um, there are different types of programs that this group is a part of. We have our Youth of the Year program. Um, it's a premier recognition program for Boys and Girls Clubs of America. We have a Money Matters, so we're learning more about um, the usage or uh, the, uh, it, being able to save and, and use banking um, for our young people. We have Triple Play, which is a health and wellness program. Uh, we have their vision, which is to provide a world-class club experience that assures success that is within reach of every young person who enters their doors. Uh, and so you can really see how successful these people are being. So we've got Power Hour. So this is, provides um, professionals with uh, strategies, activities, resources to make a club really run smoothly. We have Smart Girls. So this is Health, fitness, prevention, education, self-esteem enhancement for girls by ages 8 through 17. So what lovely programs that we can get our young people involved in. That's just so wonderful. I think what we'll do is we'll keep moving around in a circle this way. Well, this doesn't look like a tree here. No. <laughs> So these decorations are actually some of the decorations that um, our uh, team, uh, Marilyn and Delyn, um, they're a mother and daughter team. They've been working with us for so long, um, but they have been crafting these decorations out of the foam core and painting them, hand painting them. 
um, they're just so inspired and it is just so great to have them involved. But um, our angels were able to use uh, for a couple of years now and they've just been so wonderful. And our big red Santa for St. Nicholas, we had him out last year. And we thought, why not bring him back? All right. So we have two trees here. This is actually a pair. This is a um, program that has been involved uh, with um, the NOAA um, National Marine National Sanctuary. National Marine Friends. Sanctuary, yes. Um, as they do outreach with the schools uh, here in the Alpena area. And so we have um, two groups who uh, were working on projects this year. We have um, uh, Ms. Uh, Hannah Hazelwinkle's uh, three, uh, third and fourth grade class at Ella White Elementary. And so they were inspired by their schoolyard habitat. So they were studying the habitat of their schoolyard that inspired the decorations that they made for their tree this year. So we um, have all kinds of things we're inspired by pine cones and berries. Um, they craft little winter hats out of um, sticks that they were able to pick up um, from their habitat. Uh, all kinds of things. We've got leaves that are made into beautiful ornaments. Um, so they're really celebrating and loving that schoolyard habitat. Um, on the other side, we have Mrs. McNerney's uh, fifth grade class at Vassar Elementary School, and they are celebrating the different seasons. And so all of their ornaments are uh, based around and uh, influenced by things that they love and celebrate about the season. So we've got winter on the top of the tree, uh, spring over here. We've got fall coming down this area, as well as summer on the bottom. Um, and some ornaments remind me a bit of our Brazil tree that we were talking about earlier uh, with the brilliant flowers and the bright sun. Uh, really celebrating the lovely things at that time of year. I'm a little behind you at the moment. That is okay. And you're ready to move on. So what have we got next? Okay. So this tree is celebrating Starbase Alpina. So this is a STEM education program. They actually here at the museum today. They're doing some activities at our lower level. Um, so there's a group of students who's meeting. Um, so they are celebrating STEM. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so it's really um, beginning that uh, exploration early with our students. So they're really seeing the connection between everyday life and um, the stem that they're selling. So a lot of these uh, ornaments you're seeing here are actually made with a 3D printer. So it's teaching our students how to be using that type of technology, a 3D printer. Um, I believe these snowflakes are laser cut. So if you're learning how to do all of that from a computer to a laser printer, that is a truly unique experience. And many of our other decorations are celebrating really important people to the field of um, STEM research. So we've got uh, Sir Isaac Newton on our tree. We have a civil engineer. We have a computer programmer. We've got, let's see, uh, Daniel Bernoulli. Um, we have all kinds of people. There's a little bit of information with this tree as well that will tell us about each of those important people to the STEM field. But uh, it is really celebrating all of the work that we're doing uh, to enhance our uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics for our students here in Alpena. Wonderful. This way, only a few more trees in this area. Now, this tree I really love because I love animals. So, this tree is celebrating the uh, second chance um, animal facility here in Alpena. So, um, this tree was decorated to celebrate uh, the loving friendship that having a pet can bring into your life. And uh, some of the images that are on the tree are actually people who are involved in the Second Chance Animal Facilities, uh, their own pets from home. So they are celebrating um, the loving friendship that you can get when you reach out and you support animals in need in our community. Um, now this uh, project has really only been around for a few years here. But already they've found uh, loving homes for hundreds of animals. Um, and so it's just so wonderful that we can have loving people in our community who can support 
uh, the creatures that we're so happy to have our friends. Very nice. Yes. I know I'd make a whole Christmas tree for my cat if I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on this tree in the silver and blue kind of reminds me of our Lake Huron with the big waves. Uh, and so very fittingly, it is our brown trout festival tree. And so uh, if any of you have been to the brown trout festival in these few years, you know that it's a wonderful place to connect with people in the community, maybe friends you haven't seen in a long time. Um, I really hope that this year, will, or uh, this coming year, the new year, we'll be able to uh, enjoy having friends around and really have a nice festival uh, again but we love to see how people are out on the waters and they are really um, celebrating all of the fish of the area all of the resources of this area uh, and so um, this festival has been going since 1975 i think it's actually one of the longer running festivals in the area for sports fishing um, so we are so grateful to have them around and we can start that message Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we may recognize um, the apron that is on this tree as well. Um, this tree is uh, striped in gold and blue to celebrate the Lions Club of Alpena. And so they are a service organization. Um, they uh, partner with various community uh, peoples to donate to uh, feeding children. Um, they uh, donate to various other agencies who are in need um, around the area. Um, they're providing uh, grants, taking part in annual events, making donations, uh, even to the Boys and Girls Club we were talking about um, on their own tree. So as you can see all around this tree, it's all covered in things that make us think of the Lions Club. Beneath the tree, we have some presents, uh, things that they have participated in. We've got presents to Habitat for Community. Uh, we have, um, let's see, all of the whole community of Alpena. Leader Dogs for the Blind, Salvation Army, uh, and Eversight. So that's the Michigan Eye Bank. So they really are involved in all kinds of activities for people. All right, our very last tree, um, and this one actually celebrated a really great um, milestone this year, is our um, League of Women Voters tree, uh, and so we're celebrating uh, women's uh, suffrage and the right to vote, um, so we have all kinds of different people who are very important to the suffrage movement. Um, they always come out and have just a wonderful tree display with all of the um, little sparkles and accents that you can uh, expect on a tree, but a whole lot of information as well. And so besides their tree, they um, will also have a whole timeline of different ways that uh, women's uh, rights to vote were involved. And so you can learn lots more by um, checking that out. And we'll be sharing some of that information on our own Facebook page. And our very own Dottie Hayes, who is part of uh, the All Group, yeah. is very active in this group. Oh, wonderful. So some of you will probably know more than others if you are a participant then. So that is just so wonderful. We're just so glad to have community partners who are involved. Okay. So there's just a couple of other things we want to see in the museum. Yes. Right? So there's a few more things that we'd like to so see. So lead the way. So I will be taking us to our Avenue of Shops. And if you haven't been to our Avenue of Shops lately, um, the Avenue of Shops is depicting, oh, let me catch this cord. I think he's stuck on this on the penguin. <laughs> Here you go. Pictures of me pushing the cart. <laughs> right. So the Avenue of Shops is depicting um, a downtown Alpena, uh, historic Alpena, um, primarily from the 1880s to the 1920s. Uh, we are passing through uh, Vassar Hallway, so if you're interested in finding more information about uh, Mr. Jesse Vassar, the Vassar Company, you can find that here as well. But as we enter our avenue of shops, you can see um, the more historic rendition uh, of our old Alpena. So we try to keep our decor of this area um, more uh, traditional. We try to keep it very handmade. 
Um, and so as you notice, most of the color patterns are a little bit more muted here. Um, but we really wanted to celebrate uh, what it might have been like for the way for people who were living up in the 1920s. Double check and make sure we're recording. It is recording. Okay. I hope we're back. In. Okay. All together here. All right. Yay. So I think we're back on um, this initial street. I'm not sure where we cut off, so I'll, I'll kind of go back over a few things. Um, we do have uh, celebrated our harness shop um, here. So this is the Hanover harness shop. Um, in front of the harness shop, we have our tree decked out by Delta Kappa Gamma. So this is a um, majority of women who are involved uh, with uh, education who were prior teachers. Um, I know I ended up with a scholarship when I went to study teaching, um, so I'm so appreciative of them. But their tree is really uh, dedicated to celebrating the Wonder of the Schoolhouse, Christmas traditions of uh, old and um, uh, children. So we have little dollies and uh, chalkboards who uh, are celebrating that. Um, right behind us as well is our Cooper shop. Uh, Cooper is actually somebody who would have made uh, barrels uh, very important to a uh, early beginnings of a town, especially for uh, say shipping fish, uh, other things that you wanted to do, especially in an area here on the water, lots of fish. And if you know the history of Alpena, I mean, we shipped a lot of barrels oh, of fish sir, out of here. We did. So um, in 1882, I'm just looking at one of our fun facts, 1882, 966 tons of fish shipped from Alpena. Wow. So just incredible, wonderful. Um, <laughs> it's kind of touching and, and fitting that the uh, Delta Kappa Gamma Tree Celebrating Education is nearby. Um, the story goes that actually in early Alpena, one of the first um, schoolhouses, as you would say, would have met in what used to be a... All right, um, so hopefully we can hear me. Um, this is uh, our display pertaining to our Christmas tree ship. So the two ships that we have displayed in the museum are not the Christmas tree ship, but um, we thought that it would be a fun way to talk about uh, these masted schooners that we had uh, on our Great Lakes. Um, so the actual Christmas tree ship uh, would have been called uh, the Rouse Simmons. The Rouse Simmons had uh, three masts. Um, and the captain of that ship, um, his name was Herman uh, Schoenemann, um, and he was uh, the captain of this Christmas tree ship for a very long time uh, as a uh, tree salesman. And so he would sail across Lake Michigan down to Chicago, um, from the UP down to Chicago, uh, carrying these evergreens to sell um, in the harbor there. Uh, he was known uh, for carrying a big sign that said, uh, Christmas tree ship, my prices are the lowest. Um, he often had decorations on his own ship um, and uh, was known for being quite nice and uh, gifting um, Christmas trees uh, often to the needy of that community. Um, unfortunately, that ship was caught in um, quite the storm and disappeared very suddenly. And so for a very long time, um, we didn't actually know what the final resting place of the ship was, but um, for a while, uh, evergreens would wash up on the shore. Um, and it wasn't until I believe the 1970s that uh, the uh, wreck was actually located. And uh, within that location, they actually did find evergreens still aboard the ship. Um, which was really incredible uh, as a find. Um, but there is now a, a U.S. Coast Guard cutter that will take the same route and is uh, still delivering Christmas trees uh, to the Chicago area. So the tradition lives on, and uh, we're really happy to have an opportunity to share that uh, with people who might not have actually seen that. Um, I know that there's a lot of our friends um, who often like to pair their visits of the Besser Museum with the Maritime Sanctuary, and this year's a little bit different, so we're really glad to share some of that shipwreck information as well. Very nice. All right. So what do we have ahead of us here? Uh, so this is one of our, our little displays that we just love to do, these elegant displays here at the museum. And, and this was really a product of uh, Delin and um, Marilyn's uh, expertise. Um, they crafted this uh, angel choir, um, they actually created the angels about two years ago, but they are really genius with the way that they've created these. 
Now they have beautiful little choir booklets and stoles. There's actually miniature music inside that's, that's true music. And they use that music uh, to create music notes down the hallway behind us. And uh, that's really been our inspiration this season is um, the colors of the season, the whites, the blues, the icy colors, uh, and the songs that kind of make us uh, happy, um, fill us with nostalgia during the year. And um, it's just a really nice way uh, to celebrate and uh, think about all those things that we are so thankful for and looking forward to in the new year. So that in general is, is pretty much most of our uh, displays here. That's a um, lot. It's quite a bit. Um, and there's little things that I, not, I haven't even mentioned uh, that you'll notice um, if you're here on a visit. And uh, our planetarium, we actually have two Christmas shows um, that you can still come in and see. Uh, the first show is um, uh, Santa's Secret Star. And uh, Santa's Secret Star is um, a little bit more for our early learners or if somebody, if you're not so, um, uh, if you don't study astronomy and you're just wanting to know like anything about the North Star, even for myself or for my sake, um, learning about the North Star is, is quite a, a good reminder. Why don't you step back just a bit oh, so sorry. I can get you in my frame. I don't think you need to be back that far. No, you do. <laughs> and then I wonder if anyone has questions. So if people have questions, they could unmute themselves and ask their question or you could uh, put a comment in the the chat. I see Chris has said the angels are adorable <laughs> and they're probably at least as adorable here in person as they are uh, on the movie. They, are, they really are. And they're all made of paper. Yes, yeah, so we love our little angels and, and our uh, decorators to us are the true angels of our season because I don't think we would have been able to do uh, near as much as uh, we do every year without them. So we're just yeah. so grateful. That's great. Chris or Dick, either of you have a uh, question? No, it's very well done. Thank you. I, I do have questions. I, I put them in the chat as they kind of went along. But so what what time of the year are these trees put up? So um, the trees are put up. Uh, we begin getting out decorations um, basically right after Halloween. So um, depending on what the calendar year gives us, uh, sometimes it is Halloween day um, uh, or, you know, the, the days that follow. But November 1st, pretty much. Um, that's when we start getting things out. And none of these trees are put away with decorations on them. So it is every year uh, unburying all the trees, getting out all the boxes. Um, things are pretty well labeled, but um, a lot of the decorations go away by color. So if we're combining certain colors together, uh, it really is mixing and matching different pieces for about two weeks. And then usually we um, have our opening midway through November. Um, this year was a little bit different. Uh, we did have a little bit of a pause and then we opened um, about a week ago here in December instead. And uh, unfortunately we had that great big snowstorm. And so we couldn't have our great big opening. And of course this year we had a, a much smaller opening. Um, we had uh, reserve tickets and you could only have um, about 20, 25 people um, per session. Um, so we're always looking for ways to get people involved. And of course the museum is still open. Um, we do still have our capacity limits uh, set. And uh, so if you ever have any questions about coming to see those things, um, we will have this decoration uh, put up until January 31st. So usually things are coming down January 1st, right after the new year. Um, but this year we are stretching it out a little bit longer. So um, we don't feel so bad putting everything away <laughs> after not very many people have been able to see. So, um, so yeah, so we do want to make sure everybody has a chance to see things while it's, while it's here. Okay. And so who, how, how are all of these, uh, these ornaments collected over the, I mean, is this people donate things or how does that, I mean, you you know, your specialty trees like the Mexican tree and so forth. Where did all of that come from? So um, uh, that's a question we get a lot, actually. So short answer is yes, donation, but long answer is there's different kinds of donations that have happened over many years. Um, 
So the Trees of Nations, I think, was both a combined effort of, um, I know there was a very dedicated woman, who I think the name was um, Helen or Heller uh, Butt, and she was involved with, I believe, either working with or contacting, I think, Bronner's um, back in the day. And so a lot of the ornaments are very authentic, um, very well made um, from somebody who would have had contact with uh, some very classically made uh, decorations. And so all of those or ornaments are pretty much original to, I want to say a lot of that came in in the 80s to 90s. So we do have to do a bit of upkeep on some of those ornaments. I do have to do a little bit of gluing every year to make sure everything is still where it needs to be. Um, but we're looking to replace some of those things by doing some more grant writing. Um, so there is some grants that um, are involved with some of these pieces. Um, a lot of uh, what the volunteers are doing involves kind of a donation of their time and talents. And so sometimes they're coming in and donating things that they have found throughout the year that pertain to um, the decorations that we have set for the year. Uh, all of the trees uh, are mostly donated. Um, on occasion, we'll put out a call because we're short on like uh, seven foot trees or six foot trees. Um, oftentimes what we'll end up doing is we'll take in donations of those trees who even have lights on them. And then we have to cut all the lights off of them so that we can keep using them uh, year after year. Um, so it is quite a bit of background work. Um, every so often uh, we do have to get rid of uh, trees or ornaments that are broken. Um, over time, um, uh, but a lot of uh, things come in as a donation. Um, this year, there are quite a few uh, decorations that are little white snowmen, and those were all donation, um, but we generally don't do a whole lot of facilitating of those donations unless it's something that pertains specifically to somebody in the area, um, Alpena history, uh, somebody who's involved in um, uh, like the woman who did the Trees of Nations uh, was involved with people from Bronner's who could get the ornaments we were looking for mm -hmm. um, to really showcase the traditional ornaments um, and uh, things that you would have found in the world specifically. Um, right. So a lot of it just depend, depends on what it is that we're looking to do. Um, but really it is facilitating relationships between volunteers and community members who are connected in ways that uh, would really benefit the, um, the decorations. So great. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, just out of a, a, um, a practical thing, where do you store all this stuff? So that's a great question too. So um, we, uh, it's pretty much anywhere that is not being used for uh, <laughs> collection storage. Um, so what a lot of people don't realize is in the Native American gallery, a lot of the walls that um, have the display cases in them are sort of built out from the actual building's walls. And so back behind those display cases, there's some open space. And so for most of the year, it's just piles of Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> And um, but like the trees of nations, um, each of those trees uh, will have boxes that are labeled. And so we know exactly what goes on each tree. And so those are all put together, you know, pretty well, um, pretty, um, pretty organized, I guess I'd say. Uh, and then year to year, we really try to um, make sure that we're not keeping too many things that are say broken or don't need to be there. And and so we are looking to kind of renovate our collection storage. And then I think as we renovate collection storage for permanent collections, we'll have a little bit more space for dedicated uh, prop um, decoration storage. And, and so that really just sort of changes over time. Um, and so like recently this year, we were able to move some of the things um, that we usually do for processing our collections materials which left us with some great space for um, prop decoration, um, creating of the props and making those decorations. So we're really hoping to have some more dedicated space that isn't just, you know, empty space. But, uh, but yes, it has been pretty interesting, but it, it seems to have worked for us pretty well so far. Uh, I like to think of it as a little bit of Christmas magic that it all fits back there. So. <laughs> yes. 
Well, it was really, it was lovely. I had no idea this, you know, I'm from the Taos area, so okay. that's not something I've heard about. So definitely next year, um, I'll be up there. I've got to make a visit. Well, wonderful. And we'd be glad to have you. I know this year's a little bit different. We've kind of missed having some visitors from outside of town and people. But you are invited. open. But we are open. Yes, um, we are here all week long. Do people um, have to make a reservation? And they don't have to make a reservation. Um, it is something that we if you have questions and you're not sure, please give us a call. We would love to give you some more information. Um, it does sort of help us if we know that there are some, there are people coming right. um, that we can give you a little bit more specific information about what to expect. Um, but for the most part uh, with people kind of hanging back and not going out quite as much, um, it is pretty quiet at the museum. So you won't be running into large crowds of people. Um, we do have regular planetarium shows. And so uh, according to our website or through our website, you'll be able to see the full show listing. And then um, depending on the weather, on occasion, we will close for weather patterns. Um, we did have an issue this last weekend with the big snowstorm and we did close for both days. And then Monday we did have to close because of you know continuing to dig out the museum. So um, we just wanna make sure everything is safe for everybody. And, and so uh, that, that has been um, our, our big concern is making sure everybody is safe. So um, we are hoping that, you know, next year we'll be able to kind of celebrate in the way that we are used to. And I'll bet uh, you are. And uh, yeah, but this year has been different for everybody, but we, we've learned a whole lot. So we're, we're happy to keep learning. Well, Amanda, thank you very much. This has been a, an, am an amazingly rich experience. I didn't expect to learn so much about all of the trees. Well, yes. And, you know, I'm so used to having uh, field trips with uh, little ones who are asking all kinds of questions. So that's, that's where all of this knowledge is coming from. And <laughs> I've sort of missed having the school kids around this year. So I'm happy to have a few visitors, you know, albeit online. So I'm, I am. Okay. Uh, so this will be, uh, this is, has been recorded. And uh, once it's processed, uh, it'll be posted on the YouTube channel for the Association of Lifelong Learners, unless there's some glitch in getting that done. And otherwise, uh, we're at the end of our program. So thank you for attending and uh, have yourself a great holiday season. Thank you so much.